For this question, I'm asked to calculate the flux of my given vector field f over this surface m by calculating the line integral of f around the boundary of m and applying Stokes' theorem. Well, Stokes' theorem tells me that if my surface is correctly oriented, the flux of f through m is going to equal that line integral of f around the boundary of m. And I've drawn my orientation in here, but you want to think about the right-hand rule. So m is a hemisphere, the top half, um, centered at the origin of radius 4 oriented upward. So I'm going to use the right-hand rule, and my thumb is the orientation upward, and then my fingers curl around to show me the orientation of the boundary. So here, they curl to be counterclockwise. Okay, so now let's get started on this line integral. So recall that a line integral, I want to parameterize my boundary in terms of t, find f of that parameterization, and then dot it with the first derivative of the parameterization. So I'm going to think about cylindrical coordinates, so like r cosine theta, r sine theta, and z. Well, I know that r is fixed at 4, and I'm going to use theta as t instead, just to be a little bit easier. So r of t is 4 cosine t, 4 sine t, 0. And now let's find f of r of t. So that just means in f, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put in the i component of r. Everywhere I see a y, put in the j component. Everywhere I see a z, put in the k component. So for the first term, I've got 3 plus z e to the y. So I have 3 plus, well, z is 0, so that second term is just going to be 0. And then I have 5 plus z sine of x. Well, 5 is going to stay, but z sine of x is going to go to 0. And then for z cubed, 0 cubed is just 0. So I have this constant vector 3, 5, 0. And I want to dot that with r prime of t. So first, let's go ahead and find r prime. So to do that, I'm just going to take the derivative of each component of r with respect to t. So for the i component, I get negative 4 sine of t. For the j component, I get 4 cosine of t. And the k component is still going to be 0. So I want to dot that with this vector here. So Three times negative four sine of t gives me negative twelve sine of t plus five times four cosine of t, which gives me twenty cosine of t. Zero times zero is zero. So this is the function that I want to integrate. And when I parameterized r, now I need to set bounds for t. So to go all the way around the circle, I'm going to go from t equals 0 to t equals 2 pi. It's just like theta, you know, I go all the way around the circle. And I'm going to use that interval that r of t is over to integrate this. So let's set this up. So I just have the integral of negative 12 sine t plus cosine of t dt from 0 to 2 pi. And let's go ahead and integrate with respect to t. So negative 12 sine t becomes 12 cosine t. And 20 cosine t becomes 20 sine t. And I want to evaluate from t equals 0 to t equals 2 pi. So let's plug in a 2 pi everywhere I see a t. So here's my first term, and now let's plug in t equals 0.
Okay, well, if we think about, you know, in terms of radians, 0 and 2 pi are actually the same angle. So my cosine terms are going to be the same, and so are my sine terms. So without even plugging in, I know that this is going to be 0. So the flux of F through M is 0.